July 3rd. I did something today I wasn't supposed to do. Last night, I heard a lot of noise downstairs, and then gunshots. Once the sun came up, Mr. Peterson didn't come like he usually does to bring me breakfast. I went into the house. I know he told me to never leave the attic, but I had to see what happened. I found him. They shot him three times. I didn't know what to do, so I ran back up here. I still don't know what to do, so I'm going to leave. I don't know where to go, but I'm afraid that if I stay, that they will find me. They shot him? Just for... You get my life color, you get my life color, 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 you give my life color. July 4th. I don't know where I am. Last night, once it got dark, I left the attic. It took a long time just to get out of town, but once I got into the woods, I felt like I could breathe again. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I've been walking all day, and I'm afraid I'm lost. But how can I be lost if I don't know where I'm going? I am so scared. I don't... Mm -hmm. You hungry? Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Your light will shine from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. That's in Isaiah. You can stay out in the dark as long as you want, but I guarantee those bugs are going to get you sooner or later. You know, the fire keeps the bugs away. Why don't you come sit for a spell? Or don't. No skin off my back. I think that's the same. There's a skin off my teeth. Oh, I never can remember that.
Got more if you're interested. Hey, you're just a little one, ain't you? Don't worry, ain't gonna bite you. You can go about 40 miles that way. You cross some water, you'll be in Almere. Or that way, a little bit further, you're gonna be in Harlem. Not the one in New York, but. <laughs> you could run south, and way south, you'll be in Eindhoven. Now, I wouldn't recommend Eindhoven. The war's been hitting it pretty hard. But that doesn't matter. You're not going anywhere on an empty stomach. Go ahead. It ain't much, but it's something. Name's Thomas. And you are... <laughs> you don't say much, do you? That's all right. Folks say I talk enough for everyone. But, I think I'm going to call it a night. I'm bushed. I'm going to close my eyes a while, but you're more than welcome to sit by the fire as long as you like. I don't know where he came from, but he was just there. I don't know what to do. Should I just stay here or should I keep running? And if I leave, where do I go? God help me. Who is Thomas and why is he out here all by himself? Who is this Thomas guy? Thomas? He was one of the Twelve Apostles. What? Thomas, one of the Twelve Apostles. No, not that Thomas. The Thomas from Miriam's journal. Oh. Well, I can't help you there. You're really getting into that thing, aren't you? Yeah, I... I don't know. There's something about her story that it's just so... What are you doing home? Honey, it's 1.30. I already did the showing. It's 1.30? I guess I lost track of time. So what's the latest with Miriam? Uh, Mr. Peterson was killed. What? Yeah, the German shot him. Miriam, she found him. That's horrible. Right? What did she do? Well, she left. The attic? Yeah, she ran off into the woods. She didn't know where she was going. She got lost, and that's where she met Thomas. Not the one from the Bible. Mom. Sorry. Go on. He was camped out in the woods. She thought that maybe he was a soldier or something. German? Uh, no. American, I think. He gave her some food and let her stay at his camp. Risky move. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Well, don't let me interrupt you. I don't even remember falling asleep last night, but I must have been exhausted. When I woke up, Thomas was gone. All this stuff was still here, but he isn't. It's beautiful out here, so quiet. It's much easier to see God's hand in the world in a place like this. I got used to the noise of the city, the sounds of the war just off in the distance. Out here, so far from that world, everything seems so still. And this is what God intended for his world. I'm sorry, young lady. I I didn't mean to startle you. I need to be heading out. I don't know what your plans are, but you're more than welcome to tag along. Where? <laughs> well, how about that? She speaks. Yeah, I'm not sure where I'm heading just yet. Wherever God leads, I guess. No, I can't stay here. Idle hands are the devil's playground. your call. All right.
right then. Well, if we're going to be traveling together, I should at least know your name. You can make one up if you want to. I don't know the difference. Miriam. Hmm. Miriam. That's nice to officially meet you, Miriam. I know Thomas is a good man who believes that he's on a mission from God. And so, having nowhere else to go, I go with him. And maybe, maybe I go with God. Is she crazy? She doesn't know anything about this guy. Mom, you were a history major, right? One semester. I was a history major for one semester. I know, I'm just kidding around, but I've been reading this journal and it's got me thinking, why did the Germans hate the Jews so much? Well, from what I understand, it wasn't all Germans. It was Hitler and the Nazi party. You see, the Nazis considered the Jews to be a race who they believed inherited a desire for world domination. To them, that would keep the Germans from dominance and would eventually wipe out the Germans altogether. But why? Why would they think that? Well, if I remember correctly, uh, Hitler was a soldier in World War I. And at the end of the war, he couldn't get over their defeat. You see, the Germans had spread the myth that they had not lost the war on the battlefield, but because they'd been betrayed, stabbed in the back. And Hitler bought into that, that the Jews and the communists had betrayed the country. So when Hitler rose to power, he just wanted revenge? Something like that. That's horrible. There's lots of horrible things in this world, Jim and people always want to try to find a reason for it. Mental health, all sorts of things, but I believe sometimes we just disregard evil. Evil? There's evil everywhere in this world, and evil people do evil things, and there isn't always a reason for it. Sometimes it's just... Evil. I've been thinking about Rudy. And? It's this journal. Mom, the way that Miriam has to run for her life, all because someone was, you know, bullying her. Like, I... You are not evil, Jimmy. You made a mistake. And it's never too late to learn from our mistakes. Sometimes we just have to open our eyes. Maybe, maybe Miriam's journal is helping you see that. Break time. Yeah, these boots have logged a lot of miles. <laughs> I had to glue the sole back on three times now. <laughs> You know, I've found that time and miles, they go a lot quicker if you got a conversation going. You know, a little back and forth. Yeah, I came over during the Great War. Been here ever since. I had a couple friends that came over here with me and we walked everywhere. Miles and miles. Hour after hour. <laughs> yeah, we talked nonstop about anything and everything. God had a different plan for us, though. See, we had to go our separate ways. They were, you know, they were a lot younger than I was, so they headed to the front lines. I uh, didn't know really why at first, but God sent me here. He had a different plan for me. See, God uses different people for special things. Some people, they don't realize it. They don't recognize that they've been chosen until later on in life. But when you do realize it, everything changes. 
Oh, I know. God's chosen people, I know who you are. You may not know it yet, but you will. What I'm talking about, though, is a little more personal. Personal? Let me ask you a question. Who do you say Jesus is? Jesus? Jesus of Nazareth? Well, Papa used to call him Yeshua. Said he was a teacher or something like that. And Mama, well, she said he may have been a prophet. Why? Well, believe it or not, he sent me to you. Who? Jesus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he told me to come out here so that I'd find a lost child. And, well, if I'm not mistaken, you're a child and you were lost. <laughs> you know Jesus? Sure do. The same Jesus that died 2,000 years ago? That's the one. Except he didn't stay dead for too long. But Papa said that they crucified him. They killed him. Oh, they did. And they buried him, too. But you know what they say. Can't keep a good man down. But how? How? Well, Jesus, uh, he's special. He's God. God can do anything that he wants to do. Young lady, he looked death square in the face and said, you ain't getting me. <laughs> no, 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 you ain't getting me. But Papa said... Now, what'd your papa say? It doesn't matter. Papa said to never talk about these things with... People like me? Gentiles? Christians? Americans? Don't worry about all that. Now, some people get all bent out of shape about stuff like that, but not me. Now, what did your papa say? He said that Jesus wasn't the Messiah that Christians claimed he was. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, a few years ago, I probably said the same thing. The funny thing is, is I was raised in church. Yeah, every Sunday, me and my seven brothers and sisters were hauled down to the Baptist church in town. We learned all about sin and evil and you know, how God sent Jesus to save us. But I, I wasn't really buying all that. But the rule in my dad's house was, you lived there, you went to church. So as soon as I could, I left. Join the army. I enlisted right before the Great War in 1914. Before I knew what was happening, I was on a boat to Europe. That's where I met him. Who? Jesus? Mm-hmm. Right here in Europe. July 17th, 1917. You met Jesus? Sure did. What does he look like? <laughs> well, that day he looked like a field medic from England by the name of Charles Finley. See, I was doing some night watch, and uh, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. They brought these two soldiers in, and their platoon was ambushed somewhere nearby. They were the only two survivors. Anyways, I was watching Charles work on them, and I don't know, it was like I saw Jesus in him. I never really paid much attention in church, you know, when I was younger. But I always remember the preacher talking about doing works of good so that others could see Jesus in us. The thing is, I didn't know Charles was a Christian, but that day watching him do what he did, it was like I saw Christ living in him, working through him. Needless to say, I've been a believer ever since, praying that one day God would use me in that way. That day has finally come. It has? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Spirit has led me all the way from my home in America right here to you to get you out of this danger and get you safely to America. America? Why? Well, he's got a special plan for you. But I ain't never going to make it if we sit here and lollygag all day. I got to get going. We got a lot of ground to cover before nightfall. Let's go. We traveled many miles as we made our way through Holland towards the coast where Thomas was able to secure a small boat which we used to travel to England. As we traveled, I couldn't help thinking about everything that I left behind, everything I loved. 
what would the future hold for me in America? Would I be accepted? Thomas said I should consider changing my name to better fit in once we got in America. I don't really want to, but I'll think about it. Oh, come on, what happened to her? To whom? To Miriam. I just finished the book and it doesn't say whether or not she made it out. I believe that happened a lot. A lot of people just disappeared back then, never to be heard of again. But why? Why did something like this happen to her? I mean, she was just a little girl. Her people didn't deserve it. There's lots of reasons why something like that could happen. And not to trivialize any of what happened, but I would guess that some of it had to do with bullying that went too far. That thing's really gotten to you, hasn't it? I've been a moron. I shouldn't have said any of those things to Rudy. Well, it's never too late to try to make things right. Now come on, give me a hug. Come on, you're not gonna leave your mama hanging, are you? Mary? Welcome to Solomon's Porch, where at... Oh, hi, Janice. It's nice to see you again. I can't stay long. I just wanted to return this. Did... James get a chance to read it? Read it? He devoured it. I've never seen him read a book so fast. That's great. What did he think of it? Well, honestly, it shook him up a bit. Both of us, really. I read it last night. But now we both have so many questions. In fact, we decided to study it some more, starting with some movies like Schindler's List, and Frank, you know, ones like that. We're both really interested in learning more. May I also suggest The Hiding Place. It's another powerful movie about the Holocaust. The Hiding Place. Mm -hmm. We'll be sure to check that one out, too. I've got to run. Thanks again, Mary. No problem. <sighs> what happened to Miriam? You know, did she make it? She did. And she made it to America. Jimmy will be happy to hear that. By the way, Mary, how did you end up with Miriam's journal? Well, it's... a long story. Another day, maybe. Right. I gotta get home anyways. Thanks again, Mary. You're welcome. I left as Miriam. I arrived as Mary to do God's will. Good no. 